Welcome to the Character Sheet, comicbook.com's official tabletop and fantasy YouTube page. I'm Christian Hoffer, and today I'm joined by my producer, Peter, and more importantly than that guy, uh, Johnny Stanton, <laughs> NFL player and uh, ESPN star. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, Appreciate so... Uh, uh, for those of you who may not be uh, as uh, attuned to the sports world, uh, which who doesn't love? Uh, First of all, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, Johnny and uh, some of his uh, rather unique Dungeons and Dragons players were recently featured on ESPN Sports Center in a, a very nice segment. Um, so, uh, I guess my first question is, is how does one convince Miles Garrett to play Dungeons and Dragons? Oh uh, man. I mean, um, so Miles is obviously one of like the biggest NFL stars in the world. Um, like he's former number one overall pick, you know, uh, sack leader for the, for the Browns. Um, got this whole world of accolades. Um, Miles, as I've very quickly learned when I joined the team is he's a huge nerd. Um, and it's like, you know, just a man after my own heart. Like he loves anime, which isn't even my fandom, but I, I just love when people like are into like passionate about these things <clears> that <throat> he, uh, he's a huge, um, uh, paleontology fan. Uh, that's what he went to eight Texas A&M for. Um, and he just has these, these really unique passions that I really love. Uh, and on top of that, I saw him many times wearing a stranger things shirt around the locker room. I'm like, okay, that's like something, something there. Um, I wanted to get a D&D game going during the season, uh, assuming I made the team that year. And I was looking around like, okay, who would be a kind of a good person to start off with? You know, I'd love to be able to kind of get this thing going, but I don't want to make it like awkward. I don't want to, you know, ask somebody who's not the right person, you know? Um, then I ended up asking Miles, like, hey, you know, have you ever played the game that they play in, in Stranger Things? I see you wearing the shirt all the time. Like, have you ever considered, like, playing Dungeons and Dragons? He's like, no, I didn't really know it was still a thing. I thought it was just kind of like, you know, something from the 80s. I'm like, oh, man, we can get you going, like, real quick. Um, if you want to play any game, I can run it for you. We can get some teammates. Like, let's do it. He says, all right, I'm down. And uh, we ended up getting some other teammates. We got Wyatt Teller, who was also in the Sports Center piece. And we got um, Kendall Lamb, who wasn't in the Sports Center piece because he was uh, not on the team at the time. Um, but he was in the, uh, on the team that original year in 2020. Um, so yeah, you know, it was, it was, it took some work to get the character creation going. And I feel like they, they chose characters that really represented them well, or at least kind of like the, uh, the archetypes that they wanted to represent. And, uh, man, we, it, it was, it was so much fun to play while we did. Uh, obviously I'm not on the team anymore, so we don't get to play as much as we used to, but we definitely have plans of playing in the future. So you obviously started the, the heathens with, you know, and Cleveland Browns locker room after this big ESPN segment that's mm -hmm. kind of like blown up all over Twitter. Have you gotten approached from any other players asking, you know, kind of get in on the game? Not yet. Um, I know that there were a couple, like as as you could see in the ESPN piece, Miles came to me um, the beginning of spring ball, spring camp this year. Um, he says like he, he was really excited to see me. He said, hey, when are we playing again? I'm like, I have I have plans. Like, let's let's we, I definitely want like want to play at some point. Uh, he says, okay, cool, because some of the Cavs players want to join. I'm like, that sounds amazing. Like, let's definitely do it. <laughs> so so if, I'm sure that if uh, if we were able to continue it this season, uh, we would have had like a handful of Cavs players, you know, maybe stop in. Um, but, uh, but yeah, nothing too much. You know, I would love to have somebody approach me. <laughs> so if there's any, you know, professional athletes watching uh, watching the show, then like, please reach out to me because I think that there's some some really cool things we can get done. Uh, so that, that, Leads to a pretty good follow-up question. Uh, was this your first time getting to play with other football players? You, obviously, you've been playing football for a really long time. You played, you know, collegiately. Um, have Have you ever played in a D and D game with other, you know, athletes of your caliber? Yeah. So when I was at UNLV, which is the school I graduated from, um, I was a big comic book nerd. Like I was getting, I was going to the local comic book shop once a week to get, you know, like ten different titles. Um, and on YouTube, a couple different channels that I was watching were playing D and D games or running a D and D campaign. So I thought, like, okay, this sounds really fun. It could be up my alley. Um, but I'm a little bit nervous because, like, when I when I get into these things, I go in deep. You know, I fall hard for it. So I need to find like the right group. Uh, I ended up going to the comic book shop and say, "Hey, is there a, is there a D and D group that like gets run out of here?" And they said, "Yeah, actually, there's one that goes on Sunday mornings. Um, you can join them. They they just started." So I reached out to the guy. We started playing together. It was a great group, but it was a bunch of people that I didn't know. 
Um, and all of my friends at the time at, at UNLV were, uh, were other athletes, other, other guys on my team. So I very quickly wanted to run my own game, uh, which is, I know something that like can kind of make people nervous about like being so like new into the hobby and then trying to run your own game, not really understanding the full scope of the rules. Um, so I ended up getting three of my teammates, um, with the rebels to join, uh, and they, they still love it. They'll still send me like memes and, and articles and stuff that they see on the internet. Uh, and I think I, uh, you know, it's, it's very fun for me to introduce people to this hobby um, because uh, I want to, I want to share in that passion as much as, as much as the next guy. Cool. Well, that leads into my follow up really perfectly, which is you said that while you're with UNLV, you, you know, you started watching some YouTube and some Twitch and that kind of got you interested in the idea of Dungeons and Dragons. Is there a, one of those actual play shows like a critical role or dimension 20 you still kind of follow right now oh yeah um you know critical role i i you know started following very early on in campaign two i was not aware of them at all during campaign one um but the first show that kind of got me interested in possibly playing dnd was um the guys at the corridor crew um in node on their channel with um uh, plan, you know, their D and D campaigns. Um, all those people, uh, were really fun to watch and I'm like, okay, this could be something that I'd be into. So they were kind of the beginning of my D and D, uh, influence. And then one of the people in that first D and D group introduced me to the adventure zone. So I binged that very, very quickly started in on, um, critical role was catching up on that. And, um, you know, since then I'm definitely an adventure zone lover. Um, Critical Role, obviously, uh, Dimension 20, I'm trying to catch up on as much as possible. My more, But my most recent uh, binge has been NADPOD Campaign 1 that I think I'm on episode 99 of, of 100. So um, I'm very close to finishing that. So about the ESPN segment, uh, you know, this is the, I believe, the second time you've kind of uh, come into the spotlight because of your love of Dungeons and Dragons. Because uh, last year, uh, I know that there was a, was it a, Sports Illustrated uh, mm -hmm. did, a, did an article. Uh, so when did ESPN uh, reach out to do like a full blown segment on on your game? Before I answer that, I want to make sure I amend my last statement. I am also a huge fan of Dungeons and Dads, and I'm friends with people on the show, so I want to make sure that I mention that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I don't want I don't want them to get mad at me. Um, I uh, remind me of the question. Oh, Sports Illustrated. Um, the, well, the reason why ESPN reached out to me was so last year. Um, I remember getting excited about the start of campaign three for critical role. I bought a ticket for the, um, to watch it in, in the movie theater. I thought it'd be really cool to be able to do that. See all the different critters around me in Cleveland. And as, as we're getting closer, I'm like, huh, I think we have a game that night. So I don't think I can use this ticket. So I should, I should sell it. Uh, so I ended up selling it. And, um, you know, that was one of the three games that I started that year. Mm -hmm. And, um, I figure, okay, you know, might as well show my love for Critical Role. I'll come into the stadium wearing a Critical Role shirt, a little bomber jacket, and tweet about it before the before the uh, for the game. And one of my friends gave me a great idea for a caption saying, "Is it Thursday yet?" It's like not. It's it's obviously very. If you in the, if you're in the know, you know it's Critical Role. But uh, if you don't, you just might think it's like, okay, is it Thursday yet? You're excited for the game. Um, post about it before the game. In the third quarter, I end up scoring a touchdown that game. Or maybe mm -hmm. it was the fourth quarter. I forget. Uh, my first NFL touchdown, my only one so far. Um, and it created waves I was not expecting. <laughs> and, um, you know, that was what led up to the sports illustrated article that year is when I revealed little, like, you know, the first session after that touchdown that, um, my teammates and I played together, we posted a picture say, well, you know, introducing the heathens and it's a picture of Wyatt and miles and, and the rest of the group, um, sports illustrated reached out soon thereafter to wanting to, you know, to make an article. And then Jake Trotter of ESPN Cleveland, after the article came out, it's like, man, I'm, I'm so bummed. I wanted to get something going up, you know, for your D and D group on ESPN, but you know, we're, we'd be right on the heels of sports center. It, it would, it wouldn't really be make sense for us. So I mean, oh, that's fine. You know, there are other opportunities. So this spring, Jake comes to me uh, at some point during spring ball and says, Hey, so I'm going to pitch um, the sports center producers or ESPN producers about uh, covering your D and D group. I'm like, okay, you know, good luck with that. You know, they sports illustrated is one thing, but ESPN, like having it on television, like that's not possible. Um, and he came, comes back a month later, says, all right, they're all in. We just got to figure out when to do it. I'm like, hold on, hold on, slow down. I, I still don't believe you, but like, when is this going to happen? He's like, it has to happen during training camp. Uh, I'm like, okay, that is, uh, uh going to be hard, but we can do it. Like, you know, we have off nights during training camp, 
you know, we'll just get get gather around the table for a couple hours and we'll knock this thing out. They made it look absolutely gorgeous. I had so much help first off. Like I had a mini, you know, a terrain builder uh, flew in from the from I think Oregon. Uh, Shad Ross came in and um, you know brought his amazing terrain. Um, we had uh, Greg Tito from Wizards of the Coast help me with like what the story was going to be. It was a kind of an opportunity to help sell the dragons of. Um, um, the new, the new starter set, um, storm uh, Isles. storm Isles, Thank you. Um, so I had all this help, uh, the producers, AJ, um, At uh, Atayi, uh, with sports center, um, brought in this golden throne that he thought would be cool for us to have the interview and for me to sit in during the, during the game as the DM. I'm like, okay, this is all amazing. You know, I, I even the minis that I had painted like a year before for the group, which were like, you know, very early on in my like introduction to the miniature painting hobby. So like was not my best work, but they made it look amazing. And um, I had all this help. WizKids was involved. So they they killed it with the production value. And then that was back in August. So since then, I've just been champing at the bit to have this thing come out. And finally, it came out right before Halloween. Nice. Well, I answered one of my questions. And that was if you were a make your own terrain guy or if it was provided or if it was like Dwarven Forge. But uh, yeah, that was Dwarven talk- Forge, uh, yeah. courtesy of Shadras. Yeah, it looked amazing in the, in the segment. And so you talked about going to the season uh, premiere for campaign three in the, in the cinema mm-hmm. and not being able to quite make it. And so then I guess the question that, cause we have a lot of critical role fans on the channel. Sure. They're going to want to know of the two seasons you've gone through so far, do you have a favorite character out of all of them? Cause I saw in the segment, Teller does a very convincing grog rage at one point. So I didn't know <laughs> if you had one in particular that stuck out to you. He does. He, um, what, you know, the one thing uh, moving away from the question really quickly, but the one thing that Miles and Wyatt do is like they weren't really performing for the camera. Like that's how they play, and they they perform for each other. It feels it's so amazing how they like they really just try to, um, in, in, you know, be become the character. Uh, and I, I just love that. You know, they are getting in animation and like. In, they were just amazing. Uh, I can't messing up my words because I'm just so excited about how great of players they actually are. Um, but uh, as far as critical role characters go, um, I'm, I'm caught up completely. I know I, I'm all the way through campaign episode. I think 39 is coming out tonight for for critical role campaign three. Um, you know, one of the first ones I connected with was Grog. I think Grog was super fun in that way. Um, you know, just like you said, having you know the energy Travis brings to the table and then um, campaign two. um, Everybody loves Jester. Um, It's hard not to, um, but I think Sam's um, not. And then um, Veth uh, was, was one of my favorite characters just because Sam was so good at like knowing like, okay, this is the end of my character arc and kind of teasing, like if he's going to leave or not and without spoiling um, too much. Sorry if I (laughs) spoiled anything for anybody. Um, but I think he just did a great job of then really, uh, investing himself into other people's, uh, storylines. So those, uh, you know, he's, they're all just amazing storytellers. So what do you have coming up next? Because you're, you're back out on the West coast and that obviously is the heart of, uh, tabletop RPG, uh, streaming and stuff like that. So do you have any upcoming projects? I, I do. And, uh, you know, there are some things that are definitely in the works for, you know, stuff, things that I'm excited about. Um, this week, I have a t-shirt coming out on Monday and a dice set coming out on Friday. So that kind of converged right at the right, you know, right around the perfect time. And I, I, I'm really trying to ride this momentum of, uh, of the sports center piece coming out. Um, I was just able to shoot, um, actually, uh, with dropout, um, uh, last week, which was very, very fun. Um, you know, there are a lot of things that I think are just about to start and a lot of them I can't necessarily talk about yet. Um, you know, there are people that I'm seeing and hanging out with that I don't really necessarily want to, um, you know, give away that privacy. (laughs) So, um, (laughs) hopefully, you know, there are things that, uh, you know, if you follow my Twitter account, which is the one I'm most, most active on, um, you'll be able to be up to the minute on that news. Cool. And I think, um, I know Christian's got one more question, but I think my last one is you've, You've branched into Dungeons and Dragons. You've built, you know, the Heathens up. Have you kind of branched into other tabletop hobbies? Would you be, you know, down for like a Warhammer game with Henry Cavill at some point? Or have you started playing a little Age of Sigmar or Kill Team? (laughs) 
I, I I will say I'd be nervous to hang out and play Warhammer with Henry Cavill. First off, I'm, I'm not a Warhammer guy yet. Uh, I can definitely see myself yeah. getting into the hobby. The second thing is I'm fairly certain that my fiance would leave me for Henry Cavill. Um, like he is like her number one. I'm like, oh man, I don't know if I can have them around each other. Um, but yes, absolutely. I would do that. Um, I am, I'm a fan of kids on bikes. I'm a fan of, I love running dread and 10 candles around the holiday season. I played a very, very fun game, um, with some really cool people. Serena Marie, Kaylee Bray and Luis Carrazzo were in a 10 candles game that I ran, oh, yeah. uh, just a private game. Like it wasn't recorded or anything. Um, I love, I love running dread is just like such a great horror game that has the coolest mechanic, you know, pulling from the Jenga tower. Um, and actually I have plans, um, without revealing too much, uh, I have been, um, pushing the idea of creating a football, um, kind of Friday night lights esque or like sports anime esque, um, TTRPG. Uh, and trying to create something like that. So uh, TM, 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 but <laughs> I'm, um, I'm hoping to uh, to start working on that. Uh, well, we, we already have started working on that, but I'm hoping that something uh, something cool can be announced soon. As a fellow formal football player, that would be amazing. Yeah, awesome. So far, uh, I haven't seen anything like it. It would be the RPG equivalent of Blood Bowl, and that sounds really, really interesting to me. Yeah, no, we're definitely going to be taking some inspiration from Blood Bowl, but maybe a little bit less like fantasy races and more kind of like a little bit of magic, but you know, we're, we're still working on it. We're trying to get like that um, high school drama mixed in with like, uh, or maybe it was, I think we're going to go we're going, going with college, um, but trying to get that drama mixed in with the, um, the games and the preparation for the games, which I think should be really fun. So it's going to be like Strixhaven meets. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nice. Oh yeah. Good call. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so uh, last question, putting you on the spot for a minute. Uh, one D and D. What are your thoughts? So I haven't uh, really um, gone in with what I've been like. What I haven't gotten into the rules as much as I would like to yet. Um, but uh, as far as I can see, there are some things that I would definitely be more um, likely to want to play five E for a little bit longer. I think. Mm. I'm just going to ride the tide. I'm going to, I'm going to ride the wave of like, what is everybody else playing? Um, you know, if, if one D and D ends up being super popular, obviously I'll be playing that and I will love it because it's going to be D and D and that's, you know, the mechanics isn't what makes D and D it's kind of the, the feeling that you get playing it. Um, so I'm going to be honestly just playing what everybody else is playing. Um, but I'm excited for the possibilities of one D and D for sure. You know, kind of balancing some of the classes uh, as long as you still get that like combination of power fantasy and with the, um, you know, the, the feeling that you get, um, around a table, like rolling dice that, um, you know, I personally, as much as I love other TTRPGs, I haven't had that same experience, um, as, as I have running D and D games. So, um, you know, I'm excited for what's to, what's to come in the future. Well, thank you very much for your time, Johnny. Uh, and for those of you who watched this video and stuck around to the end, be sure to hit those like <laughs> and subscribe buttons. So you never miss a tabletop and fantasy update. Uh, be sure to follow uh, Johnny on Twitter. Uh, yes, Johnny Santon IV on Twitter, Instagram, and on Twitch, where I paint a bunch of miniatures with some cool people. <laughs>